Hi everyone, welcome to Startup Sofa. I'm Birgit and today I have with me uh, Patrick Billiets from eKate. Welcome Patrick. Good morning. Thank you for passing by on our sofa. My pleasure. Um, can you start telling us uh, what eKate is all about? Uh, eKate is about uh, bringing the e-perform, e-sales performance of brands and manufacturers uh, to the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, what it means for our customers is that we help them to hire their revenue, to hire their uh, profits, mm -hmm. and as such, at the end of the day, eKate helps them to uh, increase their bottom line. Okay. So more precisely, what is it about is that we uh, offer to the sales and marketing departments of our customers actionable data. Actionable data not only about themselves, uh, their own products, but also about their competitors, their competitors' products, so that they can compare easily their performance. Mm -hmm. And such actionable data we provide for uh, six dimensions, what we call our six core dimensions, meaning, uh, first of all, it's uh, um, uh, market presence, visibility, mm -hmm. uh, pricing positioning, pricing compliance uh, policy, mm -hmm. um, e-content and e-reputation. Okay, so actually you're uh, a different kind of platform than the usual typical e-commerce analytics platforms. You're actually providing a service for the brands itself to collect the different kinds of data from all the platforms where they sell their products on. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, Ecade is not your first company. Um, we know that you have had several other companies, uh, so we can call you maybe a serial entrepreneur. Um, tell us a bit more about what you did in the past. Uh, yeah, uh, my past, uh, let's say in my younger days, I worked for uh, corporates, mm -hmm. such as Turing and uh, Shell. Um, at the end, uh, when I left Shell, I was part of the European team. Mm -hmm. uh, responsible for the European uh, marketing uh, loyalty schemes. Um, I quit uh, Shell in, I think, 2000 mm -hmm. to co-found Mobile Expense. Yeah. Uh, and Mobile Expense was a SaaS-based uh, provider mm -hmm. to automate expense management within companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I left uh, Mobile Expense some years ago to concentrate on new challenges and uh, um, yeah, uh, new, uh, new ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so eKate, how did you come up with the idea to start with this kind of uh, reporting platforms for brand and manufacturers? Uh, by eKate, uh, I was in contact uh, with a good friend, uh, Jérôme Collet, mm -hmm. uh, who was already working with uh, Valérie Mangeau on CKZ, uh, who does uh, monitoring but on the social media. Okay, uh, yeah. And there was the idea uh, to also bring the the e-monitoring to the brands and the manufacturers um, and so uh, we got in contact start a discussion and in fact uh, i've been invited let's say to the table uh, based on my background with mobile expense mm -hmm. my SaaS background uh, mm -hmm. bringing uh, products and services uh, to a b2b market okay yeah that's interesting and right now uh you're with two other co-founders right yes um how um how important in your vision are co-founders to set up a company um but in my opinion uh, today uh, being several uh, to start a company is uh, a great asset mm -hmm. uh, can generate a lot of benefits uh, and in my opinion at two levels one is to bring together uh, people with several competences, several ideas, several backgrounds, uh, especially in a tech environment where it's uh, difficult to have uh, to find in one person uh, skills related to IT, IT development, sales and marketing. Yeah, so exactly. when you're several, uh, that certainly helps to solve that issue. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, um, I would say when you're at the start, you're at uh, several co-founders. Uh, important is that you bring around the table there also people with an entrepreneurial mindset mm -hmm. who all have as um, top priority uh, the well-being of the company, the success of the company. Uh, and so uh, that definitely helps also in the early days uh, to build up a startup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you already mentioned it's a very techy business, it's a tech platform, and building tech platforms is 
quite a tricky space to be in. I mean, uh, it can be huge and super successful, but it also requires a lot of cash to pump in to keep it uh, also scalable and up to date. Uh, what are your views for EK on that? Um, it's indeed uh, a challenge. Um, I would say uh, I see three important principles uh, when starting a startup and uh, being active in the tech space. First of all is to um, manage the company and all its processes in a, what I would call a, the prudent man principle. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of uh, common sense. Um, manage all activities uh, carefully and wisely. Mm -hmm. on, one, on the one hand. Secondly, uh, in my opinion, it's about um, having a platform that you allow to evolve, evolve in line with uh, the customer needs mm -hmm. and the volume that comes up on the platform. Mm -hmm. And finally, and I think it's uh, very important, is the sense of urgency to issue as soon as possible your first invoices. Mm -hmm. and to start to generate a regular turnover. Exactly. At the end of the day, uh, you're managing a company, you want to make profits, mm -hmm. uh, and that can only come through a uh, turnover that you generate. Of course, yeah. And when you talked about like you cannot wait until your platform is perfect to push it to the market, uh, you're talking about a lean approach, like the typical build, measure, learn, we all know. Can you maybe tell us a bit more about that process? When did you, uh, for example, um, start your first market entry? How did you validate it with the clients? You first start, of course, uh, discussing about it with friends uh, who are active in that area, in that space, uh, and then you start feeling the need. Mm -hmm. um, we have then started, uh, um, before creating officially the company, starting building uh, what I would say a beta version yeah. uh, that has been uh, validated by one uh, test customer. Uh, okay. And it was more there on this in, this in the idea of does our tech choices mm -hmm. um, were working. So that was the first part, is the, the technical scope, the validation of the technical scope. And then, uh, yeah, we uh, gradually started uh, onboarding customers uh, using their feedback mm -hmm. um, and then uh, improving the platform. The first customers uh, were coming from, um, I would say, our own network. Mm -hmm. um, but good is that if you look today who our customers are, is that uh, we can say that they come of uh, all different segments and sectors. Okay. Uh, if there's, uh, there are in fact two things uh, that they all have in common, is I would say that they're in their industries, they are uh, innovators, mm -hmm. uh, and on the other hand, that they have all an international mindset. Mm -hmm. But did you also define the different needs for the, the requirements of the platform for the different type of activities they have? Um, not exactly in the sense of different needs, because the, need, uh, the needs are the, the same. It's rather the way that we have to um, provide them the information and give them um, the support to explode the data effectively. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, how do you see, like, maybe for for a future, do you want to keep focusing on a broader target audience, or do you want to evolve more to a niche or a certain industry? How do you see that? Uh, for the future of EK, I see that we will uh, become uh, the European player in e-monitoring. Mm -hmm. uh, I see us being um, industry and uh, market independent, uh, but I rather see us uh, going more and more into the into artificial intelligence, into machine learning, etc. Mm -hmm. And to grow in those future steps of EK, are you looking for any funding at the moment or are you in negotiations? Um, we are planning uh, a capital increase uh, early next year. Okay. Uh, but the capital increase that will be subscribed by the actual shareholders. Okay. In yeah. fact, uh, the three co-founders. Yeah. Okay. Patrick, um, you're an experienced entrepreneur, having several years of experience in uh, young companies, startups, scale-ups, but also in corporates. Um, as a passionate entrepreneur, how do you find a balance between work life, private uh, private life? I mean. Did you learn something compared in the beginning years or did it just stay the same? Can you share something with us about that? Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, uh, but I think that uh, my uh, uh, work, private life, has already always been quite balanced. What I mean that by that is that uh, already being a student, for me, having a busy social life, 
and keeping in touch with friends uh, has always been uh, very important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so there I found, I think, a good balance. Um, what mainly has changed is that uh, having turned recently 51, that uh, probably gives me today some more maturity, mm -hmm. some more experience, mm -hmm. which uh, helps uh, definitely, I think, to, um, to face some challenges in a more relaxed way mm -hmm. um, or to deal in a different approach with a crisis uh, whenever that occurs. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I think that's it. Thank you very much for this conversation, Patrick. Uh, thank you guys for watching our Startup Sofa session. Uh, if you have other questions for Patrick, please don't hesitate to comment below on this video and then I will give them <laughs> to Patrick uh, so he can answer your questions. Thank you so much, Patrick, for being here and see you very soon. Thank you very much thank and you. thank you for your interest. Thank you.